Hi everyone, and welcome to the second part of this video series on how to build an autonomous RC car. In the previous video, I went over the hardware that I will be using and all the software components that we will build. The final version of the RC car has two batteries. One to supply the power for the VESC that controls the servo and the brushless motor. And the other battery goes through a converter to regulate the voltage to 5 volts for the Jetson Nano. Both the VESC and the LiDAR are connected to the Jetson Nano with a USB cable as well. Let's jump to where we stopped in the previous video. The navigation stack will be your main guide. And in this video I will go over one of the most crucial parts, which is the base controller, located in the end of the navigation stack. The base controller is responsible for translating an input value to a value that can be read by the actuators such as the brushless and the servo motors, to actually move the robot. But where does these control signals come from? One example that we will be using here is the Logitech F710 controller that can use the joystick to control both the servo for the steering and the brushless motor to regulate the speed of the RC car. Not only that, but the move base controller can have many inputs coming from different sources such as the joystick, radio frequency, user interface and many more, including the navigation package which is our goal for this project in order to get the robot autonomous. The problem right now is, given our system, in order for the vest to control the servo, it needs to receive a value from minus 1 to 1. And in order to control the brushless motor, it receives RPM values. Just to illustrate, let's say that the range is from 0 to 2000 RPMs. We would have to program a different set of code for each one of the inputs, since each one of them has its own output values. To solve this problem, Raus standardized this using the topic called command val. This topic uses a twist message to send velocity commands. It is composed by linear and angular velocities in X, Y and Z that can vary from a value between minus 1 to 1. In our case, since we are dealing with a non-holomonic robot that has an Akimarine steering, we will only use linear speed X to control the speed of the brushless motor and the angular speed Z to control the speed of the steering from the servo motor but you can use different combinations for different types of robots, such as airplanes, drones, and even robot arms. With this standardization, we can now only create the codes for one type of input and focus on how we need to convert this range between minus one and one for something that makes sense to the actuators on the RC car. But what are the actual values that the VESC needs in order to control the mobile robots? Let's install the VESC package and connect it to the Jetson Nano to figure out what values should we work on. In order to install the VESC package, we first need to install ROS on our system. One of the best ways to do that is to follow Jetson Nano Hacks. It has a YouTube channel and also a blog, um, but for this I will use the GitHub page that has all the instructions in order to install ROS on our system. So first of all, I will begin by copying the link of the GitHub and then cloning it to my system. Then I will run the script that installs the full version of ROS into the system. This process should take um, about a few minutes. Um, for me it took around 40 to 45 minutes because I'm running my system on an SD card but if you're running this on a SSD, probably it's gonna be faster. After the ROS installation, we can run the Catkin workspace setup script. This will allow us to create codes, create packages, and move on with our development of the RC car. This process is quite straightforward, so it should take less than three minutes to finish. Now that we have ROS installed, we can move on with the installation of the VESC package. To make this easier, I created a bash file with all the required components, such as the Ackerman messages and the serial package. To make the connection with the VESC work every time, I created a UDEV rule. Before this, I had trouble connecting to the VESC because I was using a dynamic system variable, which was the TTY USBX. 
This X can be any number and depends on the number of devices connected and the order. To get rid of that problem, I create a rule that finds the VASC by its ID vendor. So this way I can only look for an alias instead of a dynamic variable. Now let's run the script. And since this is very straightforward as well, this should take less than one minute to run. After the installation, we can power on the VASC and connect it to the Jetson Nano. I already have my VASC connected to the USB, I just need to power it with the LiPo battery. To make sure that the UDEV rule is working, I will access the devices folder. Here we can see that the alias for the VASC is showing and working. Now we need to access the VASC package and inside the launch file, we will see that we need to configure one variable. This variable is responsible for pointing which devices should we connect it with the serial package. And since we created the UDEV rule, we just need to change that to the name VASC. After that, we need to test our connection with the VASC by setting commands for both the brushless motor and the servo motor. I will begin by sourcing our Catskin workspace in order to launch the VESC driver node file. Then I will launch the file itself. We can see that we are connected and ready to send data. Then I will begin by publishing data to the command motor speed topic with a speed of 1000 RPMs. Just remember that this is the speed on the motor itself and not on the wheels which will be much less due to the reductions. Check that all four wheels are turning since this is a 4x4 car with a differential on the front and the back. Now we can see that with this command the front wheels turn to an angle, this angle and the actual speed of the RC car are going to be calculated on the next video. In order to control the RC car with the Logitech F710, we need to install the joystick package. This is responsible for converting the values from the controller for the command veil topic in order to finally control the RC car. I made a bash script that installs all of that with a simple command. After the installation, we need to change some configuration to make the controller work properly. For this we need to access the Teleop Twist Joy package, and there we need to change two files. The first one being the PS3 config under the config folder. This file maps the buttons and the range for the command veil topic. We need to change the value of the scale linear turbo to 1 instead of 0.7. We also need to change the scale angular to 1 in order to use the full range of the servo motor. And finally, we need to change the enable button and the enable turbo button to use the shoulder buttons for convenience. After the configuration, we need to test the package. This will require the controller to be plugged in the Jetson Nano using the USB dongle. Make sure to power the controller by pressing any button and setting the controller to mode 1 which can be seen by the mode button LED being turned off. Let's run the Teleop Twist Dry Launch file and check if we get a connection with the controller. Here we can see that we are connected and ready to receive values. In order to make sure that the command veil topic is working, I will list the topics and use the command ROS topic echo to check if data is being published. As I move the controller, we can see that the values are being published to the linear X and angular Z variables. The only thing left to do is convert these controller values between 1 and negative 1 to something that makes sense for the actuators with the VESC. Now that we have all packages installed and working, we can begin to stitch all the pieces together. We will first create a package inside the source folder at the Catkin workspace. I will call this package MacJetsu and I will use Python scripts, Raspy. Now, if we open files and navigate to the source folder, we will be able to see our Mac Jetson package created. In order to get the values from the common veil topic and convert them to something that makes sense for the VASC control both motors, 
I will get a Python code that I wrote at the GitHub that I created for this project. There, you can also find all the bash installation files used previously. This code is the Fable's base controller, or the low-level controller. We need to insert this code in the source folder at the MegaJetson package. After saving the code, we need to make it executable by using chmod plus x low-level control.py. Now let's go back to our catkin workspace folder and use the command catkin underscore make to build the MacJetson package. This command will build all the packages in the source folder, in my case both the MacJetson and the VESC package. For projects with lots of packages, it is possible to choose which package to build in order to save time. Now I will get a launch file that I prepared to run all the packages in a single command, instead of using lots of terminals to launch each one individually. This launch file will run the VESC driver that I optwist joy and low-level control packages and scripts. This way, we will be able to drive the car manually using the Logitech controller. The code can be found in my GitHub and it should be saved under a launch folder that needs to be created inside the MacJetson package directory. After we build the package, we can check for the low-level control file. This basically converts the value from the command value topic to a linear scale to change the values for the VESC topics. Here we can see that we subscribe to the command value topic and create two publishers, one for the brushless and the other for the servo motor. In the function get values out, we do a linear scale conversion. The servo has a middle value of 0.5 and a range of 0.8, so its values goes from 0.1 to 0.9. This is something that you need to test in your RC car and check the limits. For the brushless motor, my center value is 0 RPMs because we need to go both directions. So because of this, I limited the maximum speed of the motor to be 4000 RPMs on each direction that gives me a range of 8000 RPMs. Finally, with the VESC and the controller connected with the USB and powered, we can launch the manual VESC file and drive our car manually. Here you can see that as I hold the shoulder kill switch, I have two modes, one being the normal mode and the other being with the boost mode. The difference between them is the speed of the RC car. Now that we are all set with the base controller, we can move on with the navigation stack with another important block which is the odometry source. This note provides the relative position of the RC car based on encoders and command values. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you.